Hello again, I am Blunty, and this is the Elgato Stream Deck, and it is friggin' awesome! Actually, to be entirely specific, this is like the, the beta test version of the Elgato Stream Deck hardware and the software that goes along with it. And I and a fistful of other streamers have been secretly testing this thing for a little while now and throwing our feedback back at the Elgato people in order to make this thing better for people who actually stream. But yeah, if you're a gamer who's even sort of casually thought about doing the, the YouTube or Twitch streaming video gaming thing, you're probably already familiar with the brand Elgato. They make some of the best capture cards out there in the world. I myself swear by the HD60 Pro that lives in that machine back there, which I've been using since launch and has never skipped a beat on me. It is fantastic. But this is something new for Elgato. They're pushing past just doing sort of the capture card thing into other products that make streamers' lives easier, starting with this. And it's designed to help you push your production quality up a few notches. It's a little box that runs entirely off USB. On the face are 15 buttons, each of which has its own little screen. You can think of it kind of like a little keyboard where every key is a fully customizable hotkey that can have whatever image you like on it. The software that drives it, which has been fairly rapidly being tweaked throughout the secret testing period, has a whole bunch of preset options ready to assign to the keys. Some are for Elgato's own capture and streaming software, of course, but they are smart enough to not trap this thing inside their own proprietary solutions. So they've also got TipiStream, OBS, Twitter, Twitch, and some open-ended, generally customizable hotkey actions. If you're an XSplit user, there's no built-in support yet, but I'm told they're looking into it, so fingers crossed on that for you guys. You can even fold the sets of actions inside folders, so you can have one set up for each different set of scenes that you use, or one for your OBS actions, and another page for your Twitch TV controls, like kicking in slow mode or subscriber-only modes for your chat. There's even an option key that doesn't actually do anything when you hit it, but it shows you a live count of your current viewers on the stream. Now, I am an OBS user, and I've got a few folders set up right now, one for my general layout, and one for the Nintendo Switch specific layout that I've been using, or streaming Zelda and all the Switch stuff, and one for my classic Pokemon layout. So at a touch of a button I can switch between these different layouts, I can toggle individual sources and images within scenes on and off. Remember though, this isn't quite its final form, and some things may change a little bit by the time it gets on retail shelves, more stuff will certainly be added, and some stuff that's wonky right now will be fixed. But in general, it's been working amazingly for me. It's so nice to be able to swap scenes, to flip on my little emoticon images at key moments, or to take a screenshot, all at a glanceable device. I don't have to remember a single hotkey combination or try to remember which keyboard key I've got assigned to my BRB scene and which one is assigned to my stream over scene. Something that, if you've ever visited one of my streams, is something I often manage to confuse somehow. I have no idea why I always confuse those hotkeys. It's not like I make them complicated, it's just two keys, boop, boop, and they're in an obvious place on the keyboard, but for some reason my brain never sticks. With this, I've never made that mistake because they got little pictures on them. I can't screw it up. There's a bunch of preset icons for you to use, but of course you can customize your own icons to whatever you like. They're even making a little web app to make creating icons easy for those of you who don't really know your way around an image editor. Now, as you can see here, I've got my Stream Deck popped up on a little tablet stand, but the final retail version will come with its own bespoke stand. The keys are, of course, silent in operation, so there's no keyboard clicking making its way into your mic and distracting your viewers. They're a bit mushy for my taste, but again, this is a beta level hardware, so I can't speak to how the final version will feel, but softer keys are certainly better than a clicky one when you're in a broadcast situation. All in all, I think Elgato are onto a real winner of a product here. Sure, they're not the first to think of putting a little screen behind keys and all that sort of stuff, but this device has been specifically created for streamers from the hardware level all the way through to the software level, and everything about it is designed to make your life easier when it comes to doing that. And it does really make a hugely positive difference to the level of ease and control you have. I love mine. You can even use it to launch your streaming program and website pages, like Twitch chat maybe. So with a couple of jabs at it, you can be ready to stream. It just makes all that stuff so much easier and lets you focus more on what you're doing on stream rather than how you're doing it. Because while I make no claims of being the world's best Twitch streamer, I, I enjoy my streams. They're you know, nice and chill and relaxed and fun, and I have a great group of regulars that come along, so if you ever do want to check it out, that's the address, I suppose, I should mention that somewhere in this video. Um, 
but the, the key to running a good stream or even a great stream is efficiency and, and, and stopping your attention being split between sort of technical side of things into the being an entertainer kind of things. And that's what this does best. It, it takes away a whole bunch of brain space that you were dedicating to thinking about how you were doing stuff and just lets you do it. Even outside of streaming, I've been finding this thing amazingly useful as well. I've got a little hot button there set up to launch the Elgato software itself. So when I want to record something for use in pre-recorded stuff like YouTube, I can just hit that button. It loads up the software. I've got a little folder in there with actions on it so I can have record and screenshot and the, and the, and the loopback, uh, what do they call it, replay recording, um, all that kind of stuff. It's all sitting there in a folder. I've even got this thing set up to trigger the hotkeys for my uh, GeForce Experience uh, recording and screenshot functions as well. So if I'm just playing a regular game, I'm not, you know, dedicated recording time to it. I don't have the Agato software set up or, or whatnot. I can just sort of hit the button on this thing instead of reaching for my keyboard, hitting control F9 or alt F9, it's alt F9 uh, to start a regular recording. I just go down here and oh look, there's a little NVIDIA logo with the word rec written on it. I can just hit that and it starts recording. It is just kind of simpler. Indeed, of course, like I've been saying, you can assign whatever you like to this thing. You can make it launch whatever program you like. You can make it do whatever hotkey function you like. I've even started thinking, I'm reviewing a, a graphics tablet at the moment. And in the shower this morning, I suddenly realized that I could use this as a shortcut deck for that as well. Because if you are an artist out there with a drawing tablet, you know having shortcut keys to quickly undo something or switch tools or switch layers or switch transparencies, all that kind of stuff you want to get to really, really quick. And there are artists out there who use sort of game controllers and things like that for shortcut keys. This could do that as well, just sort of aside from the, the gaming streaming stuff or... Indeed, there are people who stream Arctic, you know, drawing streams on Twitch as well. You could, you know, have a folder set up for your OBS stuff and a folder set up for your artist controls and things. It's just the possibilities go on and on and on and on. But I'm sort of ranting and raving at the moment. This isn't an ad, but I'm not on I'm not on the Agato payroll or anything. They asked me if I wanted to test this thing. And I said, yeah, sure. That sounds really cool. I uh, went in with a bit of skepticism, but it turns out it's really freaking awesome. As of today, you can place a pre-order for this thing. It should be launching in pretty much exactly a month, I think. That may slide slightly other side as launch dates tend to uh, go. Um, Price-wise, it's about 150 US dollars, I think. Local Australian prices, um, just looked it up on JB Hi-Fi. They've got it listed already. Uh, 199 Australian dollars. So in, in, in terms of price sort of context, that's uh, a little bit more than what I spent on, on my web camera, basically, my, my logic. Tech C920 web camera was about $160 odd dollars. This is sort of a little bit over that and it's an investment. And if you are taking the, the streaming thing seriously, you do make these kind of investments. So you invest in a decent webcam, you invest in a different, decent rock phone, you invest in a good capture card, you invest in sort of lighting and all that kind of stuff. This is just another one of those little investments that you can make to help push your production quality further and further and further. So yeah, that is the Elgato Stream Deck and I love it. It is just, just one of the most terrific things to happen to my streaming life uh, ever. It's just a simple little idea, but it, it just it's executed so very well, which I suppose is really what Elgato have been doing for a while now with the capture cards, you know, the, from, from the software all the way through to the hardware, they just kind of make things easier. But there you go, I think that's about all this sort of giddy praise I can pile upon this thing right now. <laughs> I know, but okay, a few negative things, just so you think, just so you know, I'm, I'm being honest about that. I wish the USB cord was longer. Also, I wish the USB cord was detachable, like a little mini USB thing there, so you could use your own long ones or something. But I do have this connected to a USB extension cord at the moment, and it works perfectly fine. It's just a little low power device after all. Um, I do also wish the cable was that sort of nice braided stuff, because I like I like the braided cables. Um, Particularly if you're moving this thing around on your desk, I feel like that would be a little more robust. But aside from that, there's, there's nothing I don't really like about this thing. What else would I change? I don't know. Make the body out of metal or something so it's really sort of robust and cool and awesome. I can't help it. I'm excited by this thing. I've been loving every single minute since I got the damn test version here. <sighs> Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and we'll catch you next time.